Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Every now and then I come across a post on the Red Pill subreddit that just hits the nail on the head and describes something perfectly. The post that we're going to talk about today is exactly that, and I'm really excited to share it with you. It's about how modern long-term relationships are really to the advantage of female mating strategy and what options that leaves available to men who still want to satisfy their biological imperative. This is the stuff that really fascinates me, the gender dynamics of modern dating and relationships, and I can't wait to do my analysis. But before we get to that, I just want to give a quick thank you to Land of the Losers for sponsoring today's video. I see a lot of comments in the comment section from men curious about what the dating markets are like overseas, in places outside of the West. Well, check out this book. The main character spends the first part of his dating life in America dating Western women, with predictable consequences, and then he moves to Japan, and the contrast is absolutely fascinating to read. If you want to see my full review, check out the link in the description box below. When you're ready to order your copy, whether it's hardcover or Kindle, make sure to use the special discount that's available to my audience. All right. Let's get to the video. Today's post is called The Barrier Effect. Relationships between men and women require sacrifice to some degree or another. Modern society has done a great job of convincing men and women that they are making an equal sacrifice for the relationship. However, when evaluating our biological mating strategies, the landscape of a long-term relationship is anything but equal. Women look for the highest possible value man to be with. The driving force behind this is wanting to get the highest value genetics from a man to pass to her offspring to give the best chance of enduring the next phase of life. Once she gets her pick, she's happy and comfortable. They would mate, and she'd fall pregnant. During this vulnerable pregnancy, she would need protection, which a high-value mate could provide. Once the offspring is conceived, the vulnerable mother and child both need protecting. The male would fill this role. Over the course of a woman's lifetime, she can only do this a couple of times until her fertility wears out. The less fertile she is, the less desirable she is. This means her prime physical state is the best time for her to obtain a higher value alpha male and to hang on to him. Men, on the other hand, operate a little differently. We don't have a little critter grow inside of us after mating. We are not limited to just one partner. Men can impregnate multiple women, thousands over the course of his lifetime. A high value man will be desirable to many women. Thus, the more he impregnates, the more chance his genetic material has of passing through the next phase of life. A low-value man will have far less options, driving him to hold the few options that he could get. We could summarize our paradoxical mating strategies into two distinct categories. Men are biologically driven to spread their seed far and wide. Women are driven to select the highest quality mate possible and hold on to it for reproduction. With this in mind, when evaluating a monogamous relationship, it's pretty clear to see that the male is making a far bigger sacrifice on his inherent mating strategy to make it possible. He has to defy his biological drivers constantly to maintain his loyalty, whereas if she has a high-value male, she will be quite content. Sure, there's hypergamy, but that tingle only starts to itch in the presence of a higher-value man. Owls itch for thousands of pussies, all the time. That's why you get the age-old scenario where a man cheats on his woman, and she wonders how on earth he could have cheated on her with someone so much less attractive than her. Well, because it was any other pussy other than yours, sweetheart. High-value men are likely to suffer from the barrier effect. The barrier effect is the feeling you get in a monogamous relationship that the only thing standing in your way from banging all the tightest, finest poon in your city is your partner. Your biology antagonizing your cultural programming. The less seed spreading you do, the more your desire for other women grows, while your desire for your partner dwindles. Pre-selection plays a role too, because you get way more IOIs from other women when in a relationship, which amplifies this feeling. You eventually grow to resent your partner from preventing you from fulfilling your biological need and it ultimately leads to the downfall of the relationship. The post continues, but I want to stop for a moment and just take some time and analyse this first part of the post, because while the language was a little bit crude, I think it does a fantastic job of outlining the theory. I'll take a short break and then we'll get into that analysis. Okay, so while I might have phrased it a little bit differently, I think that this post does a fantastic job of outlining the modern dynamics of relationships and why they're better suited to the biological imperative of women. Both men and women do make sacrifices in relationships, but when it comes to fulfilling our inherent sexual strategy, he's absolutely correct that men get the short end of the stick. From an evolutionary point of view, women want to attract one high value male where she can feel safe and protected and comfortably raise children. 
In modern society, that sexual strategy is absolutely acceptable. By the same token, the male instinct is to run wild and spread your seed as far and wide as possible. Yet this is socially condemned. Now, there is a strong case to be made that for the sake of society, we need to curb men's sexual desires and encourage monogamy. If men are just going to run around impregnating as many women as possible, as their instincts are telling them to do, then who's going to raise the children and provide positive role models of masculinity? Also, without the social conventions of monogamy, what's to stop the top men from attracting harems of women and hoarding them all to themselves? Where would this leave the bottom 90% of men in the hierarchy? If they have no chance of attracting a woman or having children, then what incentive is there for them to contribute to society? He is much more likely to turn to violence and crime, because if he feels like he has no chance to earn any of society's rewards, then he might just start taking them by force. I'm not saying that our current dynamic of long-term monogamy is the best possible arrangement that we could come up with, and I do think that it's an extremely positive thing that there are pockets of society where people are trying different dynamics and relationship arrangements. The more people we have engaging in unconventional relationship dynamics, the more data we have to study, and the closer we can get to finding the optimal relationship arrangement. Perhaps after all of that research, we might find that, even though there are all of these alternatives, long-term monogamy is still the best arrangement. But even if that's the case, it doesn't change the fact that it fundamentally goes against the biological instincts of men. I'm not saying that it's not a good idea to repress those instincts sometimes. After all, we know that long-term pleasure is often obtained by enduring short-term suffering. But we need to acknowledge this suffering, and this is something that you don't see in modern society. You don't see women saying to their partners, I know this must be hard for you to repress your biological instincts and be faithful to me. You don't hear women saying to their partners, I want you to know how much I appreciate your sacrifice, and you have my compassion for the suffering that you're going through. Perhaps it's because women fear that if they acknowledge that men are getting the short end of the stick, then men are going to want to negotiate a new relationship dynamic, one that benefits them and not women. After all, the best way to protect your privilege is to deny that it even exists. Why do we need to change the relationship dynamics? We're both making equal sacrifices. But it isn't equal. When it comes to satisfying their sexual strategy, men sacrifice a lot more in long-term relationships than women. And I think what stings the most about this is that it's not even acknowledged. Now, what follows is a list of four different things that a man can do to try and cope with this situation. I'm going to read through each of them one by one and give you my comment. Considering males and females differing mating strategies, how could a man derive joy from a modern relationship, taking his biology into account? There's a few options. Suppress all desire to ravage other women, live within the confines of monogamy. The lower your value, the easier this will be, because other women aren't looking at you anyway. The higher your value, the more you will feel like a shaken champagne bottle on the verge of explosion. I doubt you'd be able to endure it without breaking up eventually, and if you did, you deserve a burial alongside Mother Teresa. This is definitely the option that most men take because it's the most socially acceptable. It takes a lot of courage to buck social conventions, to risk condemnation from the group and follow your individuality. And very few men have that courage, so they just go with what's acceptable. I think that he is absolutely correct when he says that this choice gets a lot easier the lower your value is. For some men, it's really easy to make peace with this kind of arrangement, because even if they were allowed to go out and sleep with a bunch of women, they wouldn't be able to succeed. Chris Rock once said in his stand-up routine that men are only as faithful as their options. What he means is that a man who can get a bunch of partners probably will cheat, but if he can't, he'll probably remain faithful. There's no virtue in this. A man can't claim to be morally superior to other men because he's taken a vow of poverty when the reality of the situation is that he just can't get a job, just like a man can't claim to be spiritually superior because he's taken a vow of celibacy when everybody knows that the guy just can't get laid. The point is that suffering will arise if you feel like there are options available to you that you can't take. If beautiful young women are throwing themselves at you and you have to turn them down because of your monogamous relationship, it's going to sting. So, if you're a high value man who could sleep with other women, but you suppress that desire, expect to suffer for your sacrifice. Simply cheat without the knowledge of your partner. This appeases the feeling that the only barrier between you and a fuckfest is your partner. You are free to give her your best while dabbling in the sexual marketplace. More often than not, you will find that most women are far shittier than your partner anyway, 
which in turn increases your appreciation for the relationship, making you more motivated to participate. It allows you to execute your mating strategy while she executes hers. You will almost certainly get caught eventually, know the risks. This option is not good. A lot of people justify it with the old, what she doesn't know won't hurt her, but that's an ethical cop out, and deep down, you've got to know that you're doing something wrong. Yes, the arrangement that you're in might not be fair, but that doesn't give you permission to cheat on your partner. If you've made a monogamous commitment to somebody, she has a right to expect honesty and you have the obligation to provide that to her. Even leaving aside the moral concerns about how terrible it is to do that to your partner, it's also just a bad choice because it turns you into a liar and a cheater, which is going to be terrible for your self-esteem. One of the highest pleasures from relationships is the ability to share your truth with another person, to be honest with them. Your life is too valuable to settle for a dishonest life of sneaking around. He is correct though, when he says that the kind of women who you're likely to play around with are likely to be of inferior quality to your original partner, and that can have the effect of renewing your appreciation for her. A large part of this is the fact that only a woman of very dubious moral virtue would ever agree to be the other woman to have a sexual relationship with a man who already has a partner. You will most likely get caught at some point, or just be completely overwhelmed with guilt. So he's right, know the risks. A lot of men genuinely love their partner, but they just cannot bring themselves to accept sexual monogamy, and so they resort to prostitutes. This does bring about sexual relief without a lot of the complications of a full-blown affair, but it's still tainted with sneaking around, lying and cheating, and it's just bad news for everybody involved. The next two options describe relationship dynamics that are a lot more honest and authentic, but I think they're quite unlikely to find women who will agree to them. I'll take a short break, and then we'll continue. You will find many women to engage in the first two scenarios with, in brackets, because obviously she isn't aware of the cheating. The next two, not so much. Engage in a polygamous relationship on your side, Allow yourself to have sexual relations with other women while she remains faithful. She accepts your position because she's still your main girl and you are such a high value catch. You treat her as you would a long term relationship. Take care of her biological needs while taking care of yours in the form of plowing other women when the urge arises. This is an extremely rare setup in modern western society, might still have legs in the middle east, requires a very submissive woman. This is actually more common than people realise. I think a lot of women who are in relationships with extremely high value men are aware on some level that their partner might be having affairs, sleeping with a secretary, that sort of thing, but they choose to look the other way. They sort of accept that it's the price of being with a top quality man, and so long as it's not openly acknowledged or made public to their friends and family, it's generally tolerated. However, I think what he's talking about is different because it's a lot more of an explicit arrangement where your partner is aware of what's going on. This is really just one-sided polyamory, and I don't think it's reasonable. If you want the freedom to sleep with other people, I think you need to extend that freedom to your partner as well. It's okay if your partner doesn't want to pursue relationships, that's fine, but it's still important that she has the option. Otherwise, you're just a hypocrite. Like he says, women want safety and protection from a high value man, and if you're able to give that to her, perhaps she's not going to want to explore relationships with other men. Her instinct for hypergamy has been satisfied, and even though she has the freedom to sleep with other men, she may not have the desire. You both agree to an open relationship. Although in theory this may benefit you because she is more driven to remain with one high value partner, while you are driven to poke everything that has a hole in it, it also opens some loopholes that work against you. It allows for unchecked hypergamy, which in an open sexual marketplace is very difficult to manage considering many chads would be willing to pump and dump her but not commit. Your woman fucking other men is also a tough pill to swallow for a territorial man. This setup could only hold up with your value remaining sky high so that she doesn't really desire to fuck anyone else. If you don't want to lose your primary partner, but you're tormented by frustration and suffering at not being able to sleep with other women, then I think that this is really the only acceptable option for you to take. I understand that you might get territorial with the idea of men having sex with your partner, but really, if she's the kind of woman who enjoys getting pumped and dumped by alpha chads, then polyamory is the least of your concerns. What's far more worrying is the quality of the woman that you're in a relationship with. If she's a high quality woman, she should have sufficient self-esteem to ignore those types of men and not get used in that way. Psychologically, you have to respect the people she chooses as partners, otherwise you'll begin to lose respect for her, and respect once lost 
is extremely difficult to get back. But if you honestly can't handle the idea of your partner having sex with another man, then I think that if you don't want to be a hypocrite, the only option really available to you is to suppress your sexual desires and instincts and just settle for monogamy. Yes, it sucks and yes, it's repressing what comes natural to you, but at least if you have a kind and caring partner, you should at least have some compassion for how difficult this is for you. And now the end of the post. The final two options are possible, but the social stigma and cultural conditioning that most women endure would leave far fewer women willing to participate. Each and every man is free to choose any of the options above, but always be weary of the sacrifices you are making, and more importantly, why you're making them. Be weary of what you have programmed into culturally from birth, and cognizant of what has been programmed into you biologically since the dawn of man in the form of biological drivers. Reconcile these two driving forces to create an environment that you thrive best in. So there you have it. Wonderful post, great insights. I want to thank the original author of this post for expressing your ideas with so much clarity. Now I want to hear from you guys. Please leave a comment below letting us know what you thought of these options and his description of the gender dynamics in modern long-term relationships. Also, be sure to hit that like button, and if you're new here, make sure you subscribe to the channel. A lot of work goes into these videos, and if you appreciate that work, you're getting a lot of value from these videos, please consider supporting me on Patreon. It would really mean a lot to me. I want to thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you again next time.